Well, glory to God, we're continuing on the series of faith, and this is our third part on this series on how faith comes. If you want to live your life in victory, according to 1 John 5 and 4, you have to live by faith, because faith is the victory that overcomes this world. There's four times in the scripture that God commanded us as believers, the just shall live by faith. That's Hebrews right. eleven six. if you want to please God, you've got to walk by faith. So this is our third part of the series on how faith comes. So, That's right. So, you know, if we're talking about how faith comes, what better scripture to start off with than Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, so faith comes by hearing the word of God. Not having heard the word of God not, as a teenager 10 years ago or last week, faith didn't come, you know, it didn't come because you heard the word one time. That's right. It's a continual sense of hearing and hearing the word of God. That's faith right. grows. Faith comes and it grows. And, that, you know, we've talked about this before, but, uh, you know, Paul told the church of Thessalonica that he had heard about their exceeding growing faith. So when you get this faith, you can grow this faith. How That's do you right. grow this faith? Well, faith is just like a muscle. You know, you exercise and you're gonna grow, you can grow your muscles. Yep. They'll get stronger. Well, you exercise your faith. You yep. exercise your faith by believing for for good parking places. I, that's know? exactly what I was going to say. You know, things like that. You know, a lot of times when we go wrong, we start trying to believe for something that's beyond our level of faith. Yeah. We start trying to believe for SIG, and when it don't come to pass, we give up. Yep. You know, start out exercising your faith on the small things mm -hmm. and grow that faith just like the church of Thessalonica did. Yep, that exceeding growing faith. That's right. You know, faith is so important. Like Caleb said, you cannot, you can't live the Christian life without faith because, you know, we're commanded the just shall live by faith. Yep. You can't walk the Christian walk without faith because. We walk by faith and not by sight. Right. You know, so many times we get caught up in this sense realm of what things look like, you know, instead of exercising our faith to change the things, to change the situation of what it looks like yeah. to, to, to what the Word says it can look like and should look like. You know, Paul told, uh, told the church of Corinth, he said, the things that are seen, he says that they are temporary. Right. I mean, that means that they're subject to change. Mm -hmm. So you might be broke today, but there that is that you being broke is that that's subject to change. Mm -hmm. What's it going to take to change you being broke? What's it going to uh, take to change you being sick? All these things that you may be going through, the situations and circumstances, they're temporal. They're temporary. Right. They're subject to change. You know, and the prayer of faith. Faith changes things. That's what I was just fixing to say. That spoken word, when you hear that word and it clicks in your spirit, yeah, then that faith begins to grow because faith works just like a seed. Mm -hmm. And when that seed is planted and it's watered, it begins to produce a fruit in your life. And that fruit will be the healing you need, the manifestation of prosperity, uh, your family members being born again, whatever. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You cannot have faith cannot apart have from the word of God because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Ah, Lord have mercy. That's another place where so many people get in error. They, they're trying to have faith apart from the word of God, believing for something that's, that they have not been promised. Yeah. You know, you can only have faith in the promises of God. That's and right. The, and, and the promises are in the word of God. Yep. You're promised that you can have healing. If you believe for healing. And see, you the know, word is the foundation for faith. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's your foundation. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're going to look in Mark chapter 5. at Everybody knows this, this um, passage right here as the woman with the issue of blood. We're going to look at this and see how it produced faith in her life where she can receive her healing. That's right. Mark chapter 5. We all know the, the time where the legion of demons were cast out of the man. The unclean spirits come out, of man, come out of this man. Jesus said, come out. And this man, after he had been delivered of these evil spirits, he said, I want to go with you. And Jesus said, no, you, you go back to your hometown and you tell everybody about 
everything that has happened with you. They're going to see the difference this, that has happened in your life. All right, so he goes back to his hometown. Jesus goes and continues to minister. I don't know, how. does it tell you how, how long it was? It just says in he the he departed, and then he came back across the sea to this same place where the man with the legion of demons, where he was set free. He came back to this city, all right? <clears throat> and when Je- this is verse 21. And when Jesus had passed again by the ship to the other side, all right, what had happened? It said many people had gathered unto him at the sea. They were waiting on him to come back. Right. This man that, that had been demon-possessed his whole life, you know, they seen something change in him. Mm-hmm. He was going out telling everybody the miracle that had happened in his life. You know, not that he even was having to tell them, but they could see the difference. Right. You know what I mean? So he was telling them, Jesus healed me. He delivered me. I made brand new because of what this man, Jesus, has done in my life. So he was going and testifying. All right. What happens when he was testifying? Everywhere that he was going in, in his hometown, he was testifying. People were hearing. They are. They were hearing everything that he was saying, uh, and, and you know that's what the spirit of prophecy is. The, the testimony of our Lord Jesus. Right. I mean, you know what I'm saying. So by by him going forth and t- and testifying, giving his testimony about everything that God had done in his life through the laying on of hands, through casting out devils and stuff, everything that Jesus did to him, you know, it was creating faith in everybody. Right. So it was giving everybody hope. It was giving everybody faith. <clears throat> I think we just need to start in verse 22 and just cover J. Iris and yeah. the woman issue of blood. Let's get it. So verse 22 says, And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, J. Iris by name, and when he saw him, he, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with <clears throat> went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. All right, so so as he's going to Jairus' house right here, this woman right here in verse 25 of Mark chapter 5, it says, Now a woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had but was no better and rather grew worse. All right, so she had spent everything she had with the physicians, with all the doctors. She had mm-hmm. tried everything in the natural that she could try and spent everything she, that she had, but she was only getting worse. Mm-hmm. All right, <clears throat> but this is where it gets serious right here. Verse 27, and when she heard about Jesus. So who did she hear it from? <clears throat> All the all the report of Jesus everywhere he had been, it says the report of Jesus went out. People and his fame were spread abroad. That's right. People were talking. They were telling about Jesus and all of the miracles that they were seeing with their eyes and everything that he was doing by his hands, mm. laying hands on the sick and they they were recovering. All right. So she had heard that, and all right. It says when she heard about Jesus, remember. Faith, Comes That's by what I was going to say. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So she was hearing about uh, Jesus right here. So her faith was being built. That's right. All right. And she came from behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Mm, she had Bible faith. That's right. So she had heard about Jesus. And by hearing Jesus, she put her faith into action yeah. by actually going and touching the him. She acted upon what she was seeing inside of herself. She, she had corresponding action. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> and in Matthew, it actually says that she was saying within herself, like repeatedly, you know, if I could just touch his garment. I, I know how about me. Home. That's she, she was walking down that road saying, and you know, she could have been condemned and on the spot. Right there. J. Iris and Jesus. I mean, J. Iris was the priest of the synagogue, I'm sure. He was the ruler of the synagogue. He was the ruler of the synagogue. He was the one that could condemn her to death coming up and touching Jesus like that. Mm. My goodness. They really even thought of it that way. And 
Whew, Lord I knew she mercy. could be, you know, stoned for being out in public, but I didn't really think about Jairus actually being the ruler of the synagogue. Yeah, he could have put her out right there. Mm -hmm. My goodness. And, and in the fear with Jesus going to lay his hand on the ruler of the synagogue's daughter, mm -hmm. hindering. <clears throat> for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. That's Malachi right there. And uh, what is it? Not numbers. Uh, Leviticus, where is it? You know, I'm talking about the passage where it talks about uh, the issues and stuff? Uh, no, I'm not sure where it's at. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, turned him into the press and said, Who touched my clothes. And his disciples said unto him, You see this multitude thronging you? And so all of these people were doing the exact same thing that she was. Mm -hmm. They were thronging, touching him, grabbing him, just trying to be healed and all these types of things. Mm -hmm. But she had Bible faith. She That's had right. scripture to stand on. She had something saying that she could be healed. And she heard that Jesus had come to set the captives free, to heal the brokenhearted, to do all these things. Man. I got wrote a, a little side note in my Bible right here. When Jesus said, who touched my clothes? You know, I got wrote on here, faith accesses the anointing. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus is the anointed one. That's right. You know, he had no idea she was anywhere around. Yeah. He felt the, the, the virtue. He felt the power leave him. So many other people were touching him around there, but nobody, nobody else nobody accessed it. accessed that anointing. But it was her faith that accessed the anointing. <clears throat> and you know that's the anointing comes and destroys the yokes. That's it. Sets you free. And that's what it did right there. Her faith accessed the anointing that destroyed the yoke that yep. was on her life. Yep. All and it all came by a spoken word. Mm. She heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My Lord. Mm -hmm. And his disciples said, You see this multitude throwing you and you're asking who touched you? And he looked around about to see who had done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what she had done in her, she came and fell down before him and told him the truth. And he said, Daughter, thy faith. Listen to that. He says, Daughter, Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You know, you know. We see G when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You see uh, Jesus going forth, healing the sick, raising the dead. Jesus doing this. Jesus doing that. Jesus doing this. Jesus specifically said right here. Hey, man, he didn't know she was around. He looked about. Who touched me? He didn't know what. He didn't know she was there. Yeah. He said, "Your faith." Your faith has made you whole. That's First John 5 and 4 right there. My Whatever goodness. is born of God overcomes this world. See, <clears throat> see, she heard the word, she heard uh, the man that, had, that was eaten up with a legion of demons. She heard him speak about Jesus and something was born inside of her. Mm -hmm. Whatever's born of God overcomes this world and this is the victory that overcomes this world. Even mm -hmm. our faith. faith. Your faith, your faith will make you whole. My Lord have mercy. You don't have to sit around and wait on Jesus to do something he's already done. That's right. Your faith can make you whole. Your faith can can uh, give you the provision, can uh, speak to the mountains, all these types of things that you're waiting on God to do. He's, he's already put everything inside of you by that spoken word to do and to access everything that he's already done. That's you right. know what I mean? Mm. Good Lord. Yeah. Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. You know, <clears throat> Hebrews 13, 13 and 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. You know, the same Jesus that she grabbed a hold to, that she used her faith to access the anointing that was on his life. Yep. You know, that he's the same today. 
Mm -hmm. And this says in Romans 12 and 3 that God has dealt each one of us that measure of faith. Yeah. We have the measure of faith. You know, when we grow our faith and we hear that spoken word of God and our faith begins to get built up, it's time for our faith to access the anointing. Good where we can be whole of the plague, of the yoke, or whatever it is that the, the devil has us in bondage over. You know, the problem is everybody's hearing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so it says in verse 35, while he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house and said, your daughter is dead. All right, you picture J. Iris sitting here. All right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He just heard he just heard something contrary to what he was hoping for. That's right. If you hear the wrong thing, it'll build something other than faith in your life. Fear, it'll build unbelief, doubt. Well, you're fixing to see right here. Fear is what was being built in his life. All right. <clears throat> Verse 36 says, As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken. He knew, Jesus knew that something was fixing to be built in Jairus' heart yeah. that would prevent his daughter from being healed. Mm. So Jesus said, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be, but only, only believe. believe. That's it. <clears throat> if you are in fear in the situation in your life, you are not in faith. That's right. I, I, that's what caught me off guard at the beginning when I flipped over here to Mark chapter 5 and I was fisting to start talking about Legion. I, I was looking at chapter 4 right there and it said, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? When you're in fear, you're not in faith. That's right. I mean, they're, they're not two things that work together. Mm -mm. When you have one, you, you don't have the other. That's right. And when you have the other, you don't have this one. You know what I mean? And if and if if you've got <clears throat> if you've got doubt in your heart, and even even though you may have faith in your head, yeah. you know you have a head knowledge of uh, of what the word says, but that doubt is still in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. Yep, it can't come from the same fountain. Yep, you know you just got to be pure water coming from. From the fountain. Yeah, Mark 11, he that believes and doubts not in his heart shall have whatsoever he says. That's right. And that's talking about having the faith of God and letting the faith of God work for you. And even <clears throat> he, he who believes and oh, doubts not. That's a conjunction and is. He's joining those two together. He's telling you that you can have faith in your heart and you can have doubt in your heart, yep. but it will not work. Yep. He says, if you believe and you doubt not. That's why you got to get the doubt out. That's right. Get the doubt out. <clears throat> so he, he, Jesus spoke that word into J. Iris, and he says, do not be afraid, but only, only believe. believe. Let's skip on down through here. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So Jesus only allowed his closest disciples to follow him. Yep. All right. I never he knew realized this is, that was. Pe I never realized Peter, James, and John went with him. So this, I mean, this this is a serious situation right here. You can't just when you're in a a life or death situation, you don't want to just call everybody up and get a prayer chain started. Uh, you don't want to make a post on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I need your prayer request. You you get the faith, the people you know that, that are pray the prayer of faith. That's yep. right. Because I mean, if you ha if you put a post, just say for instance, you do put a post on Facebook asking for a prayer request, somebody's going to get in fear, and he tells us right there, don't be in fear, only believe. And he and even when that storm rose up in chapter four, what I was just saying, you know, he's and. He had to rebuke the storm right there. He said, why is it that you are so fearful and have no faith? You know, you can't have both of them. you got to get the doubt out and get, get rid of this fear and unbelief and doubt and stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and he saw the tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. Then he came in and said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The little child is not dead, but sleeping. So, I mean, Romans four seventeen, right there, calling those things that be not as though they were. Clearly, yep. this little girl had died. 
Yeah. But Jesus was calling her asleep and not dead. He called the end result. He, he said only what he wanted to see. That's right. He didn't go around complaining, talking about, oh, I don't think I can do this. Oh, she's a, she may be dead. She may be too far gone, these types of things. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let any kind of corrupt speech come out of his mouth like that. In verse 40, you see right here, he had to put everybody out of that house that was not in faith. That's right. They were laughing at him. It says they laughed at him and scorned him. But when he had put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the child and them that were with him, Peter, Peter James, James, and John, and took them into the room where the child was laying. And he took the child by the hand and said, Talithi Kuma, which is interpreted, Damsel, I say unto you, arise. And straightway the child arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years old. So we see the importance of faith. We have to have faith. We have to know what faith is, and we have to learn to walk and live by faith. And when we do that, we will please God. And when Jesus comes, he will find faith in your life. And we will see the end result when you walk in faith. That's right. Jesus is Lord. And he is coming soon.